Uh, so my name is Oscar. Um, I'm a pastor of Victory Church right down the street, and um, so I get to talk to you for a little bit today. But before we get started, um, just a couple of things about myself that kind of would, would, would help you understand where I'm coming from and some of the things that I, that I talk about. First of all, English was not my first language. I was born and raised in Mexico. Anybody like Mexican food? Okay, okay, you guys are going to heaven. That's pretty good. If you don't like Mexican food, then you haven't been to the places that I've been to, and I can help you out, okay? Uh, there's a lot of good places, especially here in Bethany, that some are Mexican, some are Tex-Mex. Eh, you know, I can take you to the real places. Just let me know if you ever want to eat real Mexican food. But the thing about Mexican food is a lot of the restaurants, like, serve, like, the really, really pretty Mexican food. I grew up where, like... Uh, there's 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 a food that the the uh, like most traditional Mexicans eat, especially around Christmas times, that I prefer not to eat because I know how it's made. And I don't know uh, uh, how many uh, uh, people that we have here that are not from the states. You weren't born on the states. You're from from an, another country. Okay, you you so you may relate to, to this because so this food is is really it's it's what I call nasty because but I can't handle it. Um, and it's called menudo. Uh, anybody heard of menudo? Now, if you eat it, I'm not judging you. But this is what menudo is. Menudo is. Uh, they they cook, you know, the pork or the the pig, and they cook everything. But they'll eat everything. So they get the intestines and all the lining of the stomach, and they chop it and they make it into a soup. See, now you're now you're with me. Now you know why I don't. I don't eat it, but whenever you go to a restaurant, if you ask menudo, it just it looks like a like a beefy soup. They make it dark red so that you don't see you don't even see what's underneath there, and they add all this other stuff. Don't let them fool you, because I know where it came from. And what I'm when I, when I mean I know where it came from, I know it was made. When people say, "Oh, I like to eat," you know, homemade menudo, I was like, "Okay, I've seen." Homemade menudo made from like scratch, not from scratch when you're in the kitchen like chopping the the the, the meat. I'm I'm talking about scratch from like people chasing the pig and stabbing it in the heart with a knife. That's from scratch. I don't eat menudo. If you do, more power to you. I prefer a good burger or a good steak. Anybody with me? Come on. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of good places, a lot of good burgers. I mean, and I, and by a good burger, I'm not talking a Burger King. Uh, come on. I mean, just. That's, that's, but you're in college, I remember, you know, so I, I get it. You got to go get the Wendy's, you know, dollar menu or whatever. That's okay. But if you ever save up like uh, 10 bucks, you want to go to like Tucker's, you want to go to, to uh, just a lot of, there's a lot, a lot of good burger places around here. But the thing about burgers or even a good steak, uh, a good steak, they look pretty. They serve it to you pretty. And even though you don't think about it, you know where it came from. And you know that how it got there was not a beautiful process. You with me? And sometimes in the Bible, like when I read the Bible, you have to, sometimes we forget because we get all this, all these things served, all these scriptures served at us. And we read them and we're like, oh, that's beautiful. That's awesome. But that we often forget that how that word got there was not as beautiful. The word gospel, beautiful. Ugh. You know, the word communion, let's have communion together. The Lord's Supper, beautiful, but it's not beautiful. The word salvation, oh, heaven, beautiful. But how we get those words aren't as beautiful. So the story that we're about to get into today uh, has to do with Jesus telling a story to, to, to the gathering, especially to his disciples, but to people that were there and to Pharisees. And when you read it, it sounds like really pretty, and it's something that we're all familiar with. But I want to break it down a little bit and kind of talk about how it got there to begin with. So, uh, so we'll, if you have your, your phones, follow, follow along. If not, follow along the, uh, along the, the screen, because we're going to go to John chapter 6. And it says this, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes has eternal life. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, but they all died. Anyone who eats the bread from heaven, however, will never die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And this bread which I will offer so the world may live is my flesh. Oh, okay, that's not so beautiful, Jesus. You want me to eat bread and then you want me to eat flesh. That's, that's kind of nasty. 
Verse 58, we're jumping around. It says, I am the true bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will not die as your ancestors did, even though they ate manna, but will live forever. So today, just for the next few minutes, I want to talk to you about simply, what are you hungry for? What are you hungry for? Now, before we dive into this, this, this text, let, let me give you a little bit of context of what just happened right before. So Jesus, you may be familiar with this miracle. Jesus feeds 5,000 people, more, more around 15 to 20,000 if you include women and children. And he fed them with some bread and fish. And that was so good that chapter 6 tells us that they came back for more. Have you guys ever had the bread from um, uh, Texas Roadhouse, bread with cinnamon and butter? That's what I think that it was. So they're like, hey, we want to get this. Am I making you hungry? I'm so sorry. If you're not making you hungry, think about menudo. It'll go away right away. Verse, 20, verse 26 says, Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. You want to be with me because of what I fed you, not because you understand the miraculous signs. So Jesus calls him out and says, you're following me around because you want some food, not because you understand the spiritual principles that I'm trying to, to teach you. And they replied, we want to perform God's works. What should we do? Jesus told them, this is the only work God wants from you. And listen to this. This is what it says. It says, believe in the one that he has sent. Believe in the one. Believe in the one. Simple. That he has sent. They answer, show us a miraculous sign. If you want us to believe in you, what can you do? And this is, and this is where I believe why a lot of people don't want to follow Western Christianity. Because many of us understand, or I hope all of us understand, that true Christianity will cost you something. That a lot of people that are in our churches today, and I can say that because so many of them come to our church that I'm trying to kick out. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't say that. Are we recording this message? Okay, delete that part. That we're trying to, to, to remind that following Jesus will cost you something. But many people just come because I, w- I just want something from you, Jesus. What are you going to do for me today? What are you, you going to give me today? And many of us were that person at one point in time. But you uh, have come to understand that there's, there's more to that. And listen, um, many Believers or professing Christians say today, you know, I follow Jesus, but in reality, I would tell him, Jesus, I believe you as long as you show me something. Jesus, I'll follow you as long as you prove me something, as long as, long as you do something for me. And don't get me wrong, it's okay for us to have doubts in our Christianity. And Jesus welcomes, welcomes your doubts. He's not afraid. He's not threatened by your doubts. You can bring your doubts to him. Maybe you're here and you did not grow up a, a, a Christian. And you have a lot of questions about Christianity. That's okay. Feel free to, to, to find someone who has a, reput- a, a reputable track record of following Jesus that can explain to you what that means. Verse 32 says, Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Moses didn't give you bread from heaven. My father did. And now he offers you the true bread from heaven. The true bread of God is, again, the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So what Jesus is doing is Jesus flashbacks to a story all his audience was familiar with. And it was the time where Israel fled from Egypt and they went into the desert and they were hungry and they got mad. And it's like, God, provide something for us. So God provided manna from heaven. And Jesus tells them, God fed you, not Moses. But now, through him, through Jesus, he offers you better bread. And they all get excited. You mean there's better bread than Texas Roadhouse? We want this bread. Give us this bread every day. And Jesus, verse 47, tells them, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes has eternal life. Yes, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, but they all died. This is what Jesus means is... Your ancestors got what they longed for, and they stayed hungry. They fed on what they thought they wanted, but their hunger never went away, and eventually they died. So Jesus is helping helping us and helping his audience understand that what the ancestors were looking for, what they were wanting for, and what Jesus' audience is wanting is 
a thing. It's an it. They were hungry for it. They asked for it. And after God gave it to them, their it didn't last as long as they thought it was going to last. So Jesus is saying, you're wanting the same thing that your ancestors did. You want me to prove something to you because you think that's going to make you follow me. And it won't. Because after I give you what you think you want, you will remain hungry. You will still keep going back, asking me to give you something else. And you will eventually die spiritually. The answer is not found on whatever it is that we think we need or we want in our life. Jesus is saying the answer is not found in your it. It is found on the one. It is not found on the bread that you think your body, your mind desires. But it is found in a personal relationship with Christ. He is the one. I read a story that says that the average person spends 1,100 hours a year on social media. That's 46 days straight. Why? Because it leaves you hungry. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with social media. Don't, don't get me wrong. But what's happening in our culture, in your culture, in your generation, and even in mine, is that we want something that gives us a, just a little burst of joy, a little burst of energy, a little burst of hope. But because we don't get it in the right way, we have to keep coming back for it. We get it in the morning as soon as we wake up. We get it last thing as, as soon as we go to bed. Which is the last thing we see because we're hoping to, for something to feed us. And you find out that that it will only leave you hungry and going back for more. Many people go from relationship to relationship. Why? Because they are left hungry. Maybe people, people go back to other things because they're left hungry. Hungry. Maybe you go to, the, to glass bottles. Maybe you go to plastic bottles. Maybe you go to the website. And that bread tastes good for a season. But it leaves you hungry. And you eventually die emotionally, spiritually, mentally. But when you realize that Jesus, when he said he is the one, he meant he is it. He is the one. He is the bread of life that you will live. It, now listen. If you partake and, and have a relationship with Jesus, maybe your question is, Pastor Oscar, does that mean that, that once I follow Jesus, I won't struggle with same-sex same attraction? Or my, my thirst for alcohol will end. Or, or that, if I follow Jesus, I'm not going to struggle with pride or greed or selfishness or, or, or anything else in if, you're follow, if you have followed Jesus for a while, you recognize that that's not, that's, not, that's not it. That all of your desires out of your place are not removed. But here's what that means. It means that Jesus gives you the strength from nourishment in his presence, from nourishment from his truth. He gives you the strength to say no when everything inside of you wants to say yes. Because he is the one. And Moses, when he point, Jesus points to his audience about Moses in the Old Testament. Moses was the person that God gave the Ten Commandments to. So Moses, when you see him spoken of in the, in the New Testament, Moses represents the law. He represents the Ten Commandments. He represents religion. He represents works. And one of the reasons why Moses wasn't able to make it into the promised land. Why? The promised land represents salvation in our faith. And Moses didn't make it into the promised land because the law can't bring you salvation. Trying to do good works, trying just to be a good person won't get you to heaven. Religion can save you. Coming to a Christian school, might be you might learn a lot of cool stories, but it won't get you to heaven. The only way that you can begin to experience heaven, and not even when you get to heaven, but heaven here or no on, on earth is through Jesus Christ, who was the person who God, who was able to bring Israel into the promised land? Joshua. What does Joshua mean in Hebrew? It means God saves. Jesus' name in Hebrew is Yeshua, which means salvation. 
and it's closely related to the name of Joshua. This is what it means. Joshua did what Moses couldn't do. And Jesus does what religion could never do for, for you and I. But the world will offer you this bread that makes you think, I'll, I'll be a good person and that's good enough. But you will recognize that you will still be left hungry. And you will not ever feel good enough to earn salvation. It is only through Jesus Christ. John 6.50 says, anyone who eats the bread from heaven, however, will never die. And he was talking, obviously, about spiritual life. And he says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Everyone who eats this bread will live forever. And this bread, which I will offer, so the world may live. And here it is. gets a little crazy. It says, is my flesh. And he goes on to say it six times. Eat my flesh, drink my blood. And you think you just arrived at a Hollywood party, but it's not. But I don't know how how many of you guys, can you imagine going to a church and you're on church, you've never been to church, and then people start singing about, let's drink of the blood, oh, the blood of Jesus. Or or people say, you know, today we get to partake of the blood and, and eat his flesh. You would probably walk out. I would. But so we know that he's not talking about literally about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. But what Jesus is doing, he's removing the plastic cover from the package Christianity. You know, kind of like when you, have, when, when, when you get a burger, you don't see the packaged meat that is neatly packaged at uh, Walmart or at your uh, Aldi's or wherever your homeland, wherever you shop at. It's nicely packaged, makes you think, you know, it, the, the label doesn't say, um, uh, you know, mutilated cow corpses. Right? It doesn't say flesh from screaming cows that are now dead. No, it just says, you know, round steak, you know, uh, T-bone. Why? Because it looks pretty and you handle it better. So what Jesus is doing, he's removing the fake label of what they thought Christianity was. And he's saying, I know you've heard that religion is pretty and everything, but let me tell you, this is what it's about. Because you have to drink the blood and eat my flesh. But what does that mean? What he is pointing to is simply this. The only work that God wants from you is to believe in the one he has sent. And the reason why... Many people don't believe, that choose not to believe in Jesus. It's because many times we don't, we don't recognize or understand the package of salvation and what Jesus literally went to so that you and I could have a relationship with God. So you have people asking God for something or their version of God. And he said, if, God, if you're truly God, you will fix this in my life. Let me eat of that bread. If you're truly God, why did I go through what I went through? And you keep eating that bread. And, I, and I'm at chapel and I will listen to a thousand speakers before, before I truly give my life to Christ. Or just, just, I mean, just, I'm at school. Let me get my degree. Let me get my nice, nice diploma. And, and, and that will be enough. And we struggle with that with our relationship with God because we don't like what He offers us. We want the bread that we think we deserve and the, and the bread that we think we want. And God is Jesus saying to you, if I give you the bread, you will end up hungry again. It won't satisfy you. The only way. Is that instead of receiving the bread that you want, is if you put that aside and if you say, Jesus, I believe you're the one. I want to partake of what you have for me. It may not fix me entirely or how I think I should be fixed. But at least it gives me the strength to follow you. The way the disciples followed you. And I'll close just with a couple of things that I want to remind us of. If you remember Exodus 16 Israel is super angry and mad at Moses. Verse 2 and 3 says, The whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There, was, there we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. 
But you brought us out into the desert to starve this entire assembly to death. The bread that the world offers you, the bread that the, the devil offers you, the bread that, that you offer yourself sometimes, it's, it's a fooling bread. It's a bread of deception that makes you think that you would rather live in the certainty of your prison than in the uncertainty of freedom. That I, I'm okay with being the way I am because at least I know what I'm getting tomorrow. I'm okay. I know it's not the best, but at least I'm in control. And Jesus is offering to you a freedom that only comes from him. And the word manna, when it was just, I think it's kind of silly because when, when, when God sent manna from heaven to them, the word manna literally means, what is it? Like, hey, what are you going to go eat? What is it? Well, I don't know. What, what are we going to eat? What is it? I don't know. I'm asking you. What are we eating? We're eating what is it. That's the name. What is it? And the question for us is not just what is it, but is what is my it? What is the thing that I keep going back for because it doesn't fulfill me? What is the thing, what is the bread that I've been snacking on for most of my spiritual life? But I keep going back to it because I'm, I'm still hungry. Have you ever asked why did Adam and Eve fall in the garden? It was not because they were hungry. It was simply because they ate from a tree or a fruit they thought that was going to give them something they didn't have. But primarily because we're, they were lied to. And your hunger, what you and I hunger that we're not supposed to hunger. Listen to this. If you can remember, remember this. Our hunger is always attached to a lie. What we think we desire is always attached for, to a lie. Maybe some of you grew up with your parents got divorced. Statistics says that probably 60% of people in the room went through divorce. So maybe you question, why should I even try to do it right if Christian love didn't work for my parents? So now what you hunger is attached to the lie that you were fed, fed growing up. Maybe you're here and you, you hide yourself with, with, you fill in the blank. Because I know the Holy Spirit is already telling you that thing that you keep going back to. And that it's 100% always attached from a life from someone hiding themselves to tell you, if you get this, your life will change and it will be for the better. And by now you know that it's a 100% lie. But you can't get away from it because you're stuck. My lie was... Because your parents were divorced, because your dad abandoned you, you will never be a good father. You will never, why, you shouldn't even try to marry. And if you marry, forget about having children because you're just going to mess it up. Why? Because you don't know, you've never had a good father figure that you can look up to. Why should you even try? Why? And then once you have children, I have three amazing kids, the lie turns into you shouldn't even try to spend time with them. You can't relate to them. You, you can't give them advice. Who are you to give them advice? You don't know any, anybody. And the lie keeps going to try to feed you and feed you. And if you don't eat from the bread of life, from that, the nourishment that comes from knowing Jesus, you will begin to be, believe that lie. Because most of the time, I wish I could tell you, hey, listen, I've been following Jesus for 25 years and everything gets better and everything gets easier and the battle, and battles get much, much easier and I'm a, a much better Christian. It is not absolutely like that. Aren't you glad that I can tell you the truth? But here's what it means. You recognize more and more every day that you don't have to cook your own meals because there's someone who's preparing a table for you that says, I have something for you that you don't even know of. I'm going to feed you something that you've never tried. And Oscar, I know, I know, I know what Satan is lying to you, but I'm now showing you what I have, and you'll recognize it more as a lie than you never had before. So whenever I get hungry, 
I remember, if I just go to the table of my father, I know for a fact that I'm going to receive something way better than anybody else has offered me. Would you stand this morning? Here's, I, want to, I want to pray for you. I don't, know, I don't know your past. I don't know where you come from. But here's what I know. That most people in this room, if you're honest with yourself, That there's something that you're hungry for that is valid. That it's real. But Satan's trying to offer you an invalid way to meet it. And instead of running to the Father for what he offers you, you're running away from him because you're ashamed. And because that same light that offered you something is now telling you, you're messed up. How dare you believe this? Why? How dare you did it? You should, you should not even be here. You should not even go to the Father. The Holy Spirit left you. Let me tell somebody here today. Why would God remove the one person that can help you the most after you sin? If you have sinned, which I'm sure you have, and if the devil has lied to you to tell you, the Holy Spirit doesn't listen to you, don't even pray. Why would God remove the very person that he sent to help you? So what we're saying, would you close your eyes? If, if you're comfortable, just open up your hands. Just say, God, I'm here. I, I'm, I surrender. The Holy Spirit can do more in, in just a few minutes than what I can do. I've... Father, I pray for every person in this room that is struggling with shame, that is struggling with, with addiction, that is struggling. God, I pray that out of this place, that freedom will get, begin to take place. I pray that lies would fall right now in the name of Jesus. That strongholds that were built because they believed in a lie, I pray that they would be broken in the name of Jesus. The lie that says that you'll never be good enough. The, the lie that says you'll be just like your father. You'll be just like your mother. The lie, say, the lie that says that you are incapable of being loved. You're not worthy of love. The lie that says that you are not worthy of meeting someone good because of your past. The lie that says you are not worthy of marrying someone who loves Jesus because of what you've done. I cast those lies against the truth of God's love, the love of the Father. And we say, and God, and I just speak healing of every mind. May your truth come right now and move away every lie of the enemy. And because of that, may we be healed, Lord. May, may our heart be restore, re, restored and strengthened in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If you receive that, will you just stretch your hands and say, God, I receive your bread today. I receive your Holy Spirit. I receive your healing for my heart, for my body, for my mind, for my soul. I will not hunger for those things anymore. And even if I do, I will run to the Father. I will run to your table. I will run to your table and I will be fed by your presence. I will be fed by your word that says that I am your child. I am your son and I am your daughter. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.